everyone, today I'm going to be talking to you about voting because the local elections are coming to Barking and Dagenham and it's really important that you all get out there and vote. One, because it's a 100 year anniversary of when women got the right to vote, so as a woman and as women it's really important that we use that right. And secondly, being part of the younger generation, it's really important that we make sure that our voice is heard and that our views come across. So the main reason for making this video is because there's been a lot of confusion on social media. I've seen a lot of people asking questions about what the local election is about, what do they have to do, what does it mean? So I've kind of made this to try and hopefully answer some of those questions for you. So on Thursday the 3rd of May, the UK is holding local elections. This includes Barclay and Dagenham. On this day, you get the chance to vote for councillors who you want to represent you on the council. In Barking and Dagenham, there are 51 councillors in total, three in each of the 17 wards. These councillors make important decisions about how the council is run and how council money is spent. That's why it's really important that you make sure you're voting for somebody who will represent you. Councillors are usually part of a political party, however, there are some candidates that stand independently. These are known as independent councillors. In Barclay and Dagenham, there are Green, Labour, Conservative, BNP and independent candidates that you can vote for. Who you vote for in the local elections will not impact the political party that run in the government. This is decided by a national election. That might also explain why when you get to the polling booth you don't recognise any of the names because they won't be national politicians, they'll be your local candidates. The political party with the highest number of councils elected will get to run Barking and Dagenham Council and decide how the services are run and how the council money is spent. To be able to vote in this year's election, you have to be over the age of 18, a British citizen. Forgot to mention that you can also vote if you're a qualifying Commonwealth citizen or a citizen of the EU and have registered to vote. So unfortunately, if you didn't get there in time, you won't be able to vote in this year's election you're gonna to have to wait another four years. However, if you did register to vote, you'll be able to vote at a polling station on the 3rd of May. Before the election, you'll be sent a poll card and on this poll card, it will have the name of your local polling station. It's important that you go to the one on the card. You can't turn up at any polling station. If you don't go to the one that's been allocated to you, you won't be able to vote. Don't worry if you've lost your poll card, you can find all the information on the local polling stations on the council website. All polling stations are open from 7am until 10pm. It's important that you go between these times, if you get there early or late, they won't let you vote. It's handy to take your poll card with you to your allocated polling station, but no dramas if you forget it, they'll have your name down the register anyway, so they'll just ask you for that. When you arrive at the polling station on the 3rd of May, you'll be asked your name and address. You'll then be given your ballot paper. To vote, you simply have to mark an X next to the name of the person that you want to vote for. Usually you go into the polling booth alone, but if you have a disability or you need a little extra help, you can bring someone in with you. They're really strict on this, so speak to your local electoral services team if you're unsure. For local elections, you may have more than one candidate standing for each area, in which case you can vote for up to three people. But you don't have to vote for all three, you can vote for one person, two people, or none if you really want to, just make sure to put your vote in the ballot box to ensure that it is counted. If you have any questions on the day or you're not sure about anything, you can ask the presiding officer. This is the person that's in charge of the polling station and basically make sure that everything runs smoothly, all the rules are followed, or they can offer you some help and guidance if you need it. Now all the boring stuff's out of the way, we're going to be talking about some of the rumours that I've been seeing fly around on social media. You've probably seen them too. There's a lot of people asking questions, people not sure on stuff, so I'm going to try and address some of those things now. So first off, do you need to bring a photo ID with you? At the moment, no. Most polling stations don't require you to have some. They are trying this in some areas at the moment, but not in Bath and Dagenham, so you can leave your passport and driving licence at home. Second thing, selfies. We all love a selfie, obviously Snapchat filters are great, but it's actually illegal for you to take a picture inside the polling booth. So if you want to take a photo of the day, fine, but just make sure that it's outside the polling station. And finally, I couldn't make this video about elections without talking about Pencilgate. Uh, you may remember this from last year, I'd be surprised if you didn't. There were heaps of rumours flying around about the fact that they'd be giving out pencils at polling stations so they could cross out the answers or change the answers. This whole big controversy, it's not true. Basically, they give out pencils because they're cheaper and also they're less likely to smudge. That's not to say you can't bring your own pen, you can still use it. Well, hopefully now you know a little bit more about voting and what's gonna happen on the 3rd of May. So make sure that you do get down to your polling stations and cast your vote. It's really important that you have your say and make your voice heard. And if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them below and I'll try and answer them for you. If you want to see more updates about your local area, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well.